All right, hey everyone, thank you for joining us in this session, The Road to Becoming a Power User. We are going to go ahead and jump on in, but before we do, I just wanted to do some quick introductions. My name is Molly and I have with me my marketing teammate, Amber. Uh, so we are huge advocates of showing how youth activity centers can use cloud-based class management software to its fullest potential. Our goal for today is to not only help you become a systems power user of Jackrabbit, but of any type of system that you want to implement in either your personal or professional life. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off my video right here before we get started, just to free up a little bit of space on the webcast. Okay, so you want to become a power user. Like I said in the intros, this could be of Jackrabbit or of any other system. So what we're about to cover are the steps you need to take to ensure that you're using every system to its fullest. All right, but before we look at the road ahead, let's first understand how you got to where you are. On this slide, there are three potential paths that you could have already taken to determine you need a further understanding of a class management platform. Now, these are just examples. If you don't see one that you identify with, it's completely fine. Um, if you're taking a look in your rear view mirror though, and you don't really know how you got here, I encourage you to think about it just for a second. Something other than a promotion for this session got you here today. So do me a favor, grab a blank sheet of paper and just take a few seconds to write down how you got here to this point and take a sip of my water while you do that. All right, you got it? Great. This may seem like such an easy step um, and maybe, maybe a, little a little bit unrelated to the topic of this presentation, but in fact, it has everything to do with it. So, um, you know, in my opinion, you need to take an honest look at where you are on your journey so that you know that the next step that you're going to take is in the right direction. Next, let's get real and talk about where, where you want to go. What are your goals specific to using a class management software? I'm gonna throw just a few examples out there. Um, maybe, maybe it's using software to streamline communication with parents and staff. We could all probably use a little help there, let's be honest. Maybe you need to save time processing tuition fees or need help documenting and training staff certifications. Those are all just a, a few tiny goals that you could, um, that you could have. If you have a handful, if you have more, if you have one, if you have two, if you have 10, that's awesome. Go ahead and write them down on that same sheet of paper, then prioritize them um, in order of importance, whether that's to you or maybe you know um, your entire program's goals. Go ahead and order those. Um, go ahead and order those in um, importance. Okay. So hopefully you um, are busy scribbling down some goals, but let's just, let's move on. How many times have you gone to learn something new and you think this is going great? And then it turns out to be what I like to call just an explosion of information. You're left a little confused, frustrated, and unfortunately sometimes discouraged. I don't know about you, but my hand is definitely in the air right now. Amber, maybe also too. Both hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> both hands, yes. <laughs> so prioritizing your goals will help you overcome that scenario, that feeling, and maybe just avoid it altogether. Um, think of it this way. Instead of tackling an entire system all at once, look at your primary goal to discover what features that you can utilize to fulfill it. And then next... Um, because when you learn one feature at a time, you're going to build a stronger foundation for the future. And I'm just going to give you an example right now. So let's say your primary goal is accepting tuition fees online. Okay, so there's not just one thing that you have to learn to be able to implement an e-payment strategy. So what features do you have to learn? Like take tiny little bite-sized pieces of information, digest them and get that strategy set up in place so that you can address your next goal. That next goal might be um, 
making resources available through the parent portal. Then you can go ahead and learn all the features that you need to about the parent portal. And in the background, your e-payment strategy is going to be running and you really don't have to think much of it. Um, so that's just an example of how you can use your goals to prioritize the parts of the system that you are going to use so that you can set the strongest foundation for yourself for the future. All right, now, now that you know how you got here, and where you want to go, we can really begin to look at what you need out of a system that you're going to become a power user of. So the road to becoming a successful user of any application or class management system is paved in the answers to these following questions. What is the proven process when implementing a technology? Second, what educational opportunities do I have access to? And then third, what help and support are available to me at what cost and at what time? And the great, great thing about the answers to these questions is that they're open-ended. So regardless of where you are in your journey, the answers that you seek can be tailored to your specific need. So we're gonna jump into each of these one at a time, starting with implementation. Um, and what is it? Sometimes people have a difficult um, time understanding implementation and simply put, it's just a term to describe to describe getting started with an application. You may also hear it referred to as onboarding or like I said, getting started. I know the team at Jackrabbit, we like to interchange those a lot just so things don't get stale. We gotta keep it fresh every once in a while. So if, if software is a completely new concept to your program, or if you're considering switching systems, proper implementation, it's just, it, it's just so critical to getting started. It will save you so much time and so much money. Any good software company is going to have a proven process to getting started that they are just dying to share with you. So on this next slide, I have Jackrabbit's proven process. And this isn't rocket science, y'all. Um, what we've done is our data shows that after you get started with Jackrabbit, if you take the steps of completing the quick start wizard and connecting with the product coach for a jumpstart call, you are just going to have so much greater of an understanding and an easier time whenever you transition over to um, a client success specialist. You can akin this to, um, you can akin this proven process to say a beginner class at your school. You market your program as the best because you know that it is. So whether it's an introdu introductory ballet tap class or like a starfish swim class, you know that you have built that curriculum so that the dancer or the swimmer or the gymnast, whoever is going to be prepared for the next class. So um, whenever you think of it like that, um, a proven process just becomes like a given, like, of course I need this proven process. The second pillar of becoming a system power user is learning. When you get past implementation, a common misconception is that you're done. And I'm just here to tell you in the most friendly voice that you are just scratching the surface. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's not true. If you want to set yourself up for success using any application, you have to learn the bits and pieces, the individual features of the software to truly become a power user. Like I mentioned in that example, a few slides back. So even if that means along the way, you realize just how little you know about technology, that's completely fine. Um, everybody knows the traditional learning curve, right? It, it shoots up slowly and then plateaus over to the right. The software learning curve, it looks a bit like this. <laughs> And I laugh because it's, it's funny because it's true type situation. When you're going through the onboarding phase, you might be coming up thinking, oh, this looks like fun. This is easy. I have this. And then what happens, you, you have to learn something new, a feature changes or whatever, and you land down in one of these valleys of despair. Like, what was I thinking? This is so hard. Um, and that's Okay. Technology is always changing. It's always improving, right? So it makes sense for you as a business owner or a manager for your understanding of the technology to involve and improve with it. Um, so as long as you're going along this learning curve or when you're going along this learning curve, excuse me, and you find yourselves in one of these valleys of despair, the what was I thinking, this is hard, or I know nothing moment, don't stay there long. Um, 
go back to that sheet of paper where you wrote down all of your goals, look at your goals, and then take a quick pulse check. Because if you're hung up in a valley over a goal, then figure out what is next for you to learn so that you can get out of that valley. And you don't have to figure it out alone. You have a bunch of people. I know I can speak um, for Jackrabbit. You have so many people here um, at your disposal to, to figure out how to get out of that little valley of despair. Um, and I think it's important to note that this learning curve while yours may have more peaks and valleys, just know that everybody else's learning curve is just as wavy as, as this one, as yours. You're not alone. Um, but like I was saying, back to, you know, don't stay in one of those valleys long. You have specialists here at Jackrabbit, whether it's in onboarding or support, um, no matter where you are on your journey, no matter how long that you have been with the, been with the company, you have people at your disposal. You also have um, industry resources like Amber and I, we specialize in writing blogs on topics that, um, you know, maybe you're hung up over a strategy. Well, you can go to like the Jackrabbit blog and get some inspiration that way for maybe how to revamp your strategy or take it one step further. Um, and the Jackrabbit blog is just an example. There are so many other great industry blogs out there that are great resources to help maneuver you through these peaks and valleys. Um, just off the top of my head, some other great resources are Facebook groups or community forums or just networking events, which I know are hard to come by these days. But um, just like we're, we're virtually together here, um, you can still find networking events. But Amber's going to touch on all of those deeper in just a second. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about before kicking it over to Amber is help and support. So when operating a business with software, it's inevitable that you're going to need to reach out to someone. And that's not a bad thing. The important part about receiving help um, is having an understanding of the type of support that you and your staff are receptive to. And what I mean by that is, do you prefer to talk to somebody to pick up the phone? Do you like a good old video? Um, do you prefer to read? So those are all things to be aware of whenever you get to the point where you do need to reach out for help and support. So now let's take um, just a deeper look at implementation, learning, and help and support in action. Um, Amber is going to demo that for us. All right. Do you see my jackrabbit window? Yes, I see the quick start wizard. Okay, perfect. All right. So the key to becoming a power user of any software is knowing where to find what you need when you need it. So as Molly said, let's take a look at what you can use to become a power user of Jackrabbit. And she kind of touched on this already, but no matter what kind of learner you are, we literally have something for everyone. Let's say that you just started your free trial or you're going to after this session. I'm giving you the winky face here. Um, the quick start wizard is your new best friend. If you ever need to get back to it, you can go over here to this gear icon and go to setup and your quick start wizard is right there. But if you're brand new, this is gonna pop up automatically when you log in. It takes about 30 minutes to walk through five basic steps to get you started. And this is the bare bones so that you can hit the ground running and do like Molly said and pick up one feature at a time that's important to you. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through this. I'm going to skip over things, but I just want to point out what's in here. So um, the first step is if you are coming from an Excel spreadsheet or another software, you can import your data. Um, super easy. We have import specialists. So if that is not your thing, you can throw that over to us and we'll help you with that. Um, and also you can add some admins here in step one. So who is going to be using Jackrabbit? Do you have multiple admins or do you just have yourself? Um, and you can always come back to this later as well. So step two is going to be some basic settings. So you can put in your logo, address, locations if you have multiple, taxes if you put taxes on your tuition, and also set up your income categories. If you're not sure about the income categories yet, 
you can save that as part of your discussion with your Jumpstart coach. Step three is going to be where you work on your instructors, your sessions, and your classes. So who's going to be teaching for you? Sessions are going to help you with reporting. So when does your season run? And then get started with adding a few classes. Then you've gotten all the hard stuff done. And now it's time to get you ready for your website. So that's going to be your online registration form and parent portal. So this walks you through each piece of the online registration form and at any time you can preview that to see what it looks like. And then last but not least, the parent portal. And if you notice down here, if you get busy and you need to go to something else, you can save your progress and you won't lose it. And then this will help you set up the parent portal from your login message to any announcements and all of your settings. And again, you can preview that at any time. After that, you get to work with your Jumpstart coach. Um, also, a couple of things that you can do is work on enabling e-payments, um, which are super important in this contactless new normal, um, setting up discounting and prorating for your tuition, and then also a guided setup for the staff portal. So you can move on to those on your own, but you can also go ahead and schedule your Jumpstart coach call, which is super important as part of the process. So that is the Quick Start Wizard in a nutshell. Um, but what else is available to you? Over here in the top right corner, we have the Jackrabbit Help button. Um, this is basically your Jackrabbit Help Hub, as I like to call it. So if you click on that, you're going to see lots of things available to you. So we've got the Help Center, Video Help, staff training options, and then you've got these other resources here information or events that we think are important to you. So let's check out the Help Center first. So there's many different ways that you can search in this Help Center and it makes it super powerful and robust. We have what we call these topic cards right here. If you wanna learn about any feature in Jackrabbit, you can click here and we've got it all divided up for you. If that's a little overwhelming for you, you can also use our hamburger menu, same thing. As you drop down, you've got more options to choose from. But if you know exactly what you're looking for, you can also use this keyword research or keyword search bar, excuse me. So if I type in absences, I'm gonna get a list of help articles that have absences and then you can further refine from there if you like. And just like Google search, you can use quotes to search for a phrase, and then it'll refine your search even more. So instead of looking for students and sizes, it's going to look for student sizes. And now I only have six results instead of, we take these out, we have 425. Um, so it just helps you refine your search. And then as you also saw, there is a predictive search. So if I type in student, it's going to serve up the most common articles for the word student. So That's so helpful. Of, right? Yes. <laughs> Lots of cool tricks there. So um, you could become a power user of our help center if you like. Um, the next thing I want to point out to you is video help. I'm going to go back to this page um, and we've got that called out for you right here. So if you're like me and you're more of a visual learner, you're going to love this YouTube channel. Um, Talina has done a great job of breaking up our features into two to three minute bites. You can subscribe to the channel and you can even get alerted when a new video is added. Next up, I'm going to take you through the staff training options. So this is really exciting. We actually debuted this at Boost last year. So um, our education team worked really hard to develop what is called the Jackrabbit training system. And now more than ever, people are taking on new roles and new seats at your youth activity center. And the thought of sitting down and training them on every little thing is probably enough to make you go crazy. So what we've done is we've broken it up by Jackrabbit Basics and then by user role. 
So let's just use front desk as an example. Within this, you have instructions on how to use the, the training system if you're new to it. There's also lessons, and these are all linked to the Help Center articles, so everything is as up to, up to date as possible. You can also practice what you've learned, find out where to go when you have questions, and then get certified. So you can be confident that your front desk person knows how to use Jackrabbit. Of course, your processes may be um, a little specific to your youth activity center, but you at least know that you can be confident in your staff using the Jackrabbit um, software. So those are all the help resources, but let's also take a look at support. Just to make it easy, I'm going to go back over here to our help button. So if you're not familiar with Jackrabbit support, I am here to give you all the news. Um, over here we have submit a ticket. So support is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Monday through Friday. Um, but the great thing about a ticket is you can submit that 24 seven. So for those of you that work at midnight, and I know that you do, um, and you come across something that you need help with, if you can't find it on your own in the help center, shoot in a ticket. And the first person that's on shift in the morning, they're going to have that response to your inbox first thing in the morning. Another option is live chat. So, um, the hours for this are 10 AM to 6 PM Eastern, but this is like instant messaging back and forth. So just keep that in mind that these people are at their desk live messaging with you. And this is great for your quick and dirty questions. And then request a call. So some things are just easier to talk through on the phone and we absolutely know that, but to make sure that we can support you and your needs and give you the time that you need and deserve, we have it set up as a request a call. But don't get discouraged by that. A lot of times, same day calls are available. So it's not in a way to put you off, but just to make sure we have someone dedicated to you. Now, I may be a little biased here, but I do think that Jackrabbit has the best support in the business. And that is a common theme that we hear from our clients. So if you are a client and you haven't used support, I encourage you to do so. If you're looking at Jackrabbit as your next class management software, just know that you've got a great support system behind you. And as Molly mentioned, um, use the blog as a resource. So on the Jackrabbit website, we have a blog. And of course, we talk about the latest enhancements and how to use them. A lot of times they make your life simpler. So we like to point that out. We share best practices and pro tips from our support team. But you're also going to find ways that you can maximize your youth activity center beyond using Jackrabbit. If there is a common topic that's going on in any of your industries, chances are we're going to write about it. So make sure that you're checking that out on a regular basis. Also, in addition to all of our support and help resources, um, we do have some training out there. So we offer live webinars. We also do on-demand webinars. You're attending one of our virtual conferences. We also did one this summer. And pre-COVID, we had some in-person classroom trainings and we turned those virtual for now. But our hopes are to get back out into the field and see more of our clients. In addition to all of these resources, I encourage you to stay connected with us on our social media accounts. So we have a company Facebook page and a lot of times we share those popular blog articles that our industries are interested in. So that's a great way to know what's new on the blog. We have a Facebook users group that's exclusive to clients. You get a lot of insights early and it's a great way to network with others. Um, it's a great place for people that are in your shoes using the same software to help you problem solve or get ideas. And then Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, we're very active on all of those pages as well. So I encourage you to follow us and check that out. All right. So thank you, Amber, for walking us through all of that. On the screen now, we have um, where you can send any type of question if you have one following this presentation. If you'd like to send us an email, please don't hesitate to reach out 
to us at info at jackrabbittech.com. And like Amber mentioned, we have a wealth of information available to you on our website, jackrabbitclass.com. So those are two great places to go if you have any questions following this presentation. Um, we hope you had a great time today. We hope you continue to have an awesome time at Boost and we'll see you in the next session. See ya.